The intro screen looks a little weird when you got Teter no Fuji in the middle of it. <laughs> but the time is here. The time is nigh, and thank you, Hammer Smashed, for your subscription. The Harubasho is tomorrow, and it feels like it came super quickly. We were very, very busy in the in-between month. We finally tied the knot, got married. Now she's actually my wife, and not just a chick that I live with. <laughs> In that time, uh, in the sumo world, too, a lot went down. Uh, most notably, Hokuseiho being completely ousted from sumo. We will uh, begin with some news instead of, uh, you know, the usual Bonzuke game where I actually forgot to play the Bonzuke game and uh, so on and so forth. But, uh, yeah, big, big news that I don't think anybody really expected coming out, uh, you know, within the recent months. Uh, so I'll go back and read a couple of the news articles first about it. But uh, let's see. Let me start all the way back. Uh, Hokuseiho officially accused of violence towards fellow stablemates. His punishment as well as Miyagino's will be decided February 23rd, and it already has been. But uh, Makuchi wrestler Hokuseiho has been implicated in multiple acts of violence towards the other members of the stable. A special meeting of the board will be held about it, and it was. Person related to one of the victims complained to the association in the beginning of the year, and the compliance committee viewing it seriously started an investigation. Thank you, Chad, for your Prime subscription. Uh, Hokuseiho, as well as Miyagino, were called several times for questioning during the Hatsu Basho, which is why... Hokuseiho went Kyujo during the Hatsubasho. It was not a knee injury. It was the investigation of his violence towards his stablemates. So just a, an extra tidbit there, too. Uh, let's see. The update later was Hokuseiho. His resignation was accepted. Uh, Hakuho was demoted two ranks and his salary was docked. So Hakuho, Mia, uh... Miyagino Oyakata. The violent acts were spread over more than a year, including but not limited to beating Rikishi with a stick, and the initial tip to the association came through the association's official Twitter account, which is kind of weird to think about someone DMing Sumo Association on Twitter being like, hey, one of your, uh, one of your guys is beating up other guys. Uh, the Basha will begin tomorrow, Ian. Let's see. Uh, excerpt from the board meeting explaining their loss of faith in Miyagino. In the middle of Nagoya 2022, though he was made aware of Hokuseiho committing violence, so this has been going on for more than a year, uh, he made no move to ask either Hokuseiho or B, the involved persons, about it. Oh, you know what? I just realized y'all can hear the music I'm playing. Whoopsies. Now this VOD is going to get blocked on YouTube. Because I was playing, I was playing Metallica. This is 100% getting blocked. <laughs> but yeah, apparently this violence started in 2022. Uh, Hoku, uh, Hakuho made no move to ask either Hokuseiho or the involved people about it. He did not even take a look at B's photo of his injury did not warn Hokuseiho, he did not report it to the former Shisho, and he did not, basically didn't do anything about it, which is why they're coming down so hard on him. Uh, let's see, acts of violence included slapped and throwing around B several times and causing damage to his elbow, also hit him on the butt with the handle of a broom. During the same time period, he hit A with the broom. Then, in October the same year, in the stable at Tokyo, he hit him with a mawashi rolled into a log in the ass. During Kyushu 23, he applied super glue to A's wallet, damaging it. In addition, he applied glue to B's fingers. Uh, side note on the wallet, too. Apparently, uh, that wallet was a gift from Haku Oho, and he replaced it after it was ruined by the glue. 
Uh, and then from August 22 onwards, he repeatedly two to three times a week, both towards A and B, he would slap their faces, backs and balls and would hit them in the ass with a broom or the rolled mawashi and also aimed the fire from an insecticide spray lit with an open flame at them. Right? Like, that that's psychopath shit. Yeah. <laughs> Day one is going to be tomorrow in roughly 22 hours. Uh, the extension of that, and at this point it's only rumors, but the long short of it is the stable might be shut down as a result, citing, you know, Hakuho's inability to protect his own stable. Wait, that's, that, like, the Hakuho? Yeah. That was That's his stable. Yeah. What he, the hell? He let that happen. See, I didn't know that part. What the fuck? It was a POS, but because it's sumo, it doesn't matter until it's brought to light. And even then, depending on who the stable is, depends on the punishment. A little bit. I mean, it was brought up to Hakuho. It was brought up to the coach, and he didn't do anything about it. So it had to go over his head for anything to happen. I mean, even the same thing happened, uh, I guess, to a much lesser extent with Oshoma. Because uh, in Oshoma's case, I mean, the violence sounded just as bad. Like, he would jump up and down on someone's back or something like that. But you're probably right about, you know, the sentence being lighter. Uh, I mean, the punishment is probably more severe on Hokuseiho because he was doing it more. I don't really know for sure. There's never a one-to-one -one case on it, you know? Like, the most recent other case would be... Uh, you know, Oshoma and his violence towards his stablemates, and nothing happened to him, really. Uh, yes, Hakuho was in charge the whole time, but he also wasn't living at the stable, apparently. Probably want to make an example of Hakuho for being arrogant. I'm not too sure of what their reasoning is. I don't know exactly what the outcome will be that will be decided after the tournament, but that was the biggest piece of news between, you know, the two Basho. Uh, in other news, uh, not nearly as severe news, uh, Takara Fuji has been demoted to Judeo for the first time in a very long time. If you want to take a look at his career here, January 2024, all the way back to... November of 2022. He was in the top division for 11 years straight. I said 2022, but I meant 2012. But with that demotion, his longest consecutive matches in the top division streak has finally been broken. And he will be sitting at seventh place overall for that record. Uh, I might have gotten the number wrong, but it will show up in the top right hand corner of your screen eventually. That is one of the little fun facts that I put up there. Uh, additionally, Tamawashi moves into the top 10 for the most matches as a sumo wrestler. So as long as he stays healthy and as long as he keeps on doing sumo, he can continue breaking records. Four concurrent records now Tamawashi is holding. Hokuseo has been fully retired. He handed in his resignation papers and they were accepted. Not like Abi, who he handed in his resignation papers and they haven't accepted them, but they're still holding on to them. So for those of you who might be newer to sumo, Abi had his own, you know, kerfluffle, not violence or anything, but just, you know, him being stupid. And, uh, you know, they are holding on to his letter of recommendation. So, you know, just fun fact, they could accept that at any time. <laughs> All righty. But uh, now let's start our show proper. The first thing we're going to do is take a look at the Bonzuke, which... Once again, I forgot to submit to guess the Bonzuke, which, you know, the top score being 65, looks like it was kind of a tight race. Top 10 reaches all the way down to 57 points, so very hard to predict Bonzuke. So this is going to be the first time I actually take a look and, you know, mark down what happens on the Bonzuke. We were right about pretty much everyone at the very top, so we'll mark them in green. But then Uda and Asanoyama 
I said Asanoyama would go up above Uda, but Uda only falls a half of a rank with that 6 and 9. So unfortunately for me, we only get a uh, half a point for them. So green equals 2 points. Yellow equals 1 point. Red equals 0. I won't be doing the too high, too low thing again. Just, uh, you know, actually the number of points. Uh, Atami Fuji and Meisei, I got on the wrong sides as well. So that's that's kind of annoying. <laughs> oh, ho and Takanosho, I guessed on the right sides this time. So at least we're getting it. Uh, Tobizaru Hirado Umi, we guessed those correctly too. Holy cow. Uh, Midori Fuji, but that's where the fun stops. I had Gonoyama here at Maigashira 5, and that was a miss. Ono Sato sits up at Maigashira 5. Big promotion for the big man Ono Sato. We're looking forward to seeing what he is going to be able to do. Uh, Tsuru Gisho, I also missed. He's actually at Maigashira 6, not Maigashira 7. You know, still a half a rank below Ono Sato, but... Maybe I was too kind to Takiyasu in his demotion, so we miss out on a point with Sudogisho. And it looks like, uh, where the hell even is Takeyasu? He must have fallen far. Maigashira 8, yeah, we totally missed out on that. I probably could have put him much lower. It's an odd month already. Yep. Marriage already messing you up. What's the status of Hoshoryu's injury? Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen any updates. And I haven't seen anything about him being absent, and he is indeed on the schedule for tomorrow, so I'm going to assume he's fine. You know, no news is usually good news in sumo. Let's see, Keen Bolzon and Tamawashi I had at Maigashira 7. We missed both of them completely, so we don't get points for those. Tamawashi was Maigashira 8, and Keen Bolzon, I had him at Maigashira 6 next to Takiyasu, so... Looks like I was a little too kind to those demoting, and I thought Keen Bozon would have stayed at the same rank. You know, I just missed out on that one. Uh, but I do get Ono Show here at Maigashira 8, so two points right there. Uh, after that, Maigashira 9, I have Koto Shoho with a half of a point right here. Hokuto Fuji, I missed him by a full rank. He's actually down to Maigashira 10, so no points right there. Thank you, what's up, for your subscription. I also missed out on Shodai by half of a rank, but because it's uh, you know, a full number rank, I just completely miss out on that. Let me uh, correct these colors over here. Um, Takayumi, I got him at the right rank though, so my guess is, you know, other than this little miss right here, I mostly got these guesses. Uh, Ichi Yamamoto, let's see, I got him on the wrong, yeah, Ichi Yamamoto and Sada no Umi, right rank but wrong sides, so... Only one point for each of those. Shonan no Umi, Shimazo Umi, we actually got bullseyes on. Ryuden and Chura no Umi, we missed the sides, so only a point there. Nishiki Fuji, Kitana Waka, another bullseye right there. This is a really good guess, honestly. Uh, but it looks like the bottom of the Bonzuke, we did kind of miss out a lot on. Roga, we only get a half of a point for. Miyogiryu. He was at actually at Maigashira 15, not 16, like I guessed, so we get miss out on a point completely. Uh, I guessed Endo at Maigashira 17. He's actually at Maigashira 16, so we miss out on a point there. Whoopsies. So we miss out on a point there. Uh, Dayamami, I had him on the wrong side of the Bonzuke, so a half of a point there. And then Takeru Fuji. Huh. Oh, wow. Okay, so I had Hokuseho at Maigashira 15. Hokuseho actually fell to Judio 3. That's a huge miss. I didn't have Takeru Fuji on the Banzuke at all. But uh, Hokuseho falls and... Well, I mean, he's not even in the top division anymore anyway. He's not, he's not doing sumo anyway. <laughs> Hoshodu injured. He won his 47th tournament last month, so I doubt he's injured. <laughs> Uh, uh, Japan does not experience daylight savings, only, uh, I think we do in America, I don't think Europe does daylight savings at all, so, Americans most affected by sumo tournament. So, let me count up these points right here to see what score I would have gotten, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, uh, 40, 42, 44, 
46, 47, 48. I would have gotten 49 points. And if I had actually submitted my guest the Bonzuke on time, 49 points would have gotten me just outside of top 50. One of my best scores I would have had in literal years. But, you know, I got busy, you know, <laughs> I forgot to submit my scores. From now on, I should probably just submit my score the day I write my Bonzuke out. But, you know, I, I'm not the most intelligent man. <laughs> it is what it is, and it is unfortunate, but uh, I would have gotten 50 first. Dang. Ah, well. But this was another fun Bonzuke to guess. Uh, it is a real shame that the likes of uh, Takara Fuji isn't up there anymore. But hey, Takeru Fuji, honestly, if he wasn't competing with Ono Sato, he might be Rookie of the Year. Like, Takeru Fuji, I am very high on him. And, uh, you know, we'll probably keep comparing Ono Sato to Takeru Fuji because they are, you know, two of the standout rookies this year. Roga, he was technically a rookie in the top division last year, so he misses out on honors of, uh, you know, rookie of the year this year. But, uh, you know, Takeru Fuji and Ono Sato, they're both, you know, 23, 24. They're both kind of young. Uh, ono Sato obviously had a hotter start or higher start Takeru Fuji had to start all the way from the bottom but like look at his score line 13 and 2 Yusho from the last tournament and he actually made it up 6 and 1 from my Makushita won 5 and 2 and I mean he's he hasn't lost more than 2 so is he gonna continue the trend to go 13 and 2 from Maigashira 17 or will he finally lose more than 2 in a single Basho his rival here, Ono Sato, all the way up to Maigashira 5, so he's going to have a real rough time of it. And he might just be out of range of the Sanyaku, but we'll see when we go and talk about the Kachi Clash. Uh, uh, also, if anyone in the chat has it, I did not see... Uh, that's the wrong video. But I did not see uh, the Sumo Kyokai YouTube put out the... Uh, the Dohyo Matsuri again, so no Dohyo Matsuri tonight, it looks like. But if anyone does have video of that and if they could send that to me, it would be nice. Otherwise, we just have, you know, these two pictures, which I mean, even though it's the same thing every time, I like to watch the Dohyo Matsuri. Look, there's already a crack in the side. <laughs> Let's see. But. That does bring us to the Kachi Clash, and I think this is going to be one of the most difficult Kachi Clashes in a long time. Uh, the first up here, Yokozuna and Ozeki. Now, one of my favorites, Kotonowaka, has finally made it to Ozeki. It's going to be difficult between all of these guys. Teruro Fuji looked good at the last tournament. He's ready and raring to go for this one. Kirishima... Just barely lost out on, you know, Yokozuna push. Hoshoryu out for injury near the end of it. Takakesho, Kadoban, Kotonowaka, the fresh new hotness. But is he going to have that post-promotion hangover? It's really hard to say for all of these guys because, you know, injury prone, injury prone, kind of injury prone. Kirishima seems to be the most solid of all the candidates, whereas Kotonowaka seems to be, you know... I mean, he's, he's doing really good, don't get me wrong, but you always have to be worried about, you know, that first tournament afterwards. Is he going to have those jitters, or is he going to perform? Me, personally, Colton Awaka is my favorite out of all five of these guys, so that's who I'm going to be going for. There is, I think there is no wrong answer when it comes to picking anyone up here so I would be surprised if there is like one outlier compared to a lot of other guys if it was permitted Ozeki really should be should take their first Basho as Ozeki off to heal up since they get that Kadoban <laughs> nah you can't do that then every single like the hype would die out like oh the new Ozeki is taking a break in his first tournament you know must be lazy so that's a bad precedent you know but uh, my personal favorite amongst these five is Colton Awaka, so that's who I'm going to vote for. Uh, 
again, there really is no wrong answer because although I mentioned all the negatives, you know, injury prone Teter no Fuji, injury prone Takakesho, injury prone Hol Shoryu. Well, not as much injury prone as the others. Not yet, at least. Kirishima, solid, but has a tough time getting over the hump. Kotonowaka, fresh and new. But on the other side of the coin, powerful Yokozuna, solid. Takakesho, one of the most violent pusher thrusters. Hol Shoryu, creative judo specialist. Colton Waka just solid and powerful in his own body. Like, they're all good. This is exciting. It's great to have four Ozeki again. <laughs> and they're all pretty good, you know? They're all unique. It's, it's great. I'm excited for this tournament. And I can only hope that they all stay healthy. Uh, this next section, we're actually pretty light on the Seki Waka and Komusubi. Which, uh, nah, you're good. Which, uh, doesn't happen too often. But we have Daisha, Wakamoto Haru, Abi, and Nishikigi making his return to Komusubi. Uh, honestly, I wouldn't pick either of the Komusubi here because Abi, even before his suspension, was like permanently stuck at eight and sevens. He was he was very stuck at eight and sevens. So, oh. Wow, I'm stupid. How did no one correct me on this? I turned off the music for the Twitch side, not the YouTube side. <laughs> Damn. I, so I've you been, really can't post this. I, I've been streaming for, like, close to 10 years, and I still make stupid mistakes like that. <laughs> I want Teru Fuji win so he gets 10 Basho, and I think if he does win, he'll retire. I would like that. Still got to fix the raffle, too. All right, it's turned off right now. Let me fix that real quick. Uh, where is it? There we go. But anyway. Uh, Abby, I wouldn't really pick here because he was just 8 and 7 merchant, really. 8 and 7's constantly from Komusubi. Very inconsistent, more inconsistent than Daisho. And if you're going to pick... Abi, you may as well pick Daisho, you know? Uh, Nish Kigi, he's cool. I don't dislike him. He's nowhere near my favorite. If you, if I had a list of all my favorite sumo wrestlers, he'd probably be closer to the middle or the bottom. He's not too impressive, but he's obviously strong enough to be a Komusubi. But it's definitely one of those, like, veteran things where, you know, eventually you're going to make it to Komusubi. <laughs> like, Tamawashi and Takara Fuji were Sekiwake at one point in their career. Endo has been a Komusubi before. You know, Myogiryu, I think he was a Sekiwake at one point. Um, You know, Oki no Umi, Sara no Umi. Like, everyone, if you're good enough, you're eventually going to luck into that Komusubi slot. Not to say everything is luck, especially when you are a solid Rikshi like Nishikigi, but I mean, if you're going to pick Nishikigi, you may as well pick Wakamoto Haru. He's just kind of like a better version. He is smaller, so he has a different move set, but uh, I mean, I truly don't see anyone picking either Komusubi here. And then even between the Sekiwake, Daisho, he's gone nine and six at the past two tournaments, which is Definitely not bad. Wakamoto Haru went 10 wins at the last tournament, but the last time at Sekiwake, he went 6-9. and nine. So, you know, fell out, immediately came back up. But, uh, I mean, it's kind of like a coin flip between these two. And honestly, I think I like Wakamoto Haru a little bit more. I don't, I don't really think one is going to do better than the other. I think maybe they both end with like a 9-6. and six. Daisho, I think he has a higher chance to pop off because he is, uh, you know, it's a more high risk, high reward style he runs. So, you know, maybe if he fights a couple of these lower guys like Ono Sato, who doesn't have experience with that, Takanosho, who I think is a flash in the pan back all the way up here, then maybe Daisho has a chance. No, wait, no, he can't fight Takanosho. No, wait, yes, he can. I I'm mixing him up with Tobizaru. He can't fight Tobizaru. Takanosho can't fight Takakesho. They're from the same stable. <laughs> Tommy Fuji can't fight Tedder no Fuji. But uh, this next section here, 
Uh, Mayashira one through five. You know I have to vote Toby Zadu. Sorry, princess. I can't vote for Takanosho. No. Excuse that's, you. That's the only. That's the only pick I get for your thing. Excuse. Then make your own Kachi clash. No, 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 you go no, 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 no. You make your own Kachi clash. No, 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 no. I'm already suffering as it is. Give me Takanosho. Get your own Kachi clash. No. You give me Takanosho. No. Uh. Uh, Kotonowaka did not change his name. He is honoring his father first by keeping his name, uh, Kotonowaka for the first tournament. And I don't remember if he plans on changing it after this tournament or after he wins his first U show, which may not even be this year, if you know what I'm saying. But, uh, excuse me. But, uh, Kotonowaka does plan on changing his name soon. It will be after this tournament. Thank you, Zenza. Four. You're sleeping on the couch. Make your own Kachi Clash. No! I'm not picking Taka No Show. See, we're already arguing like an old married couple. Don't give me the boo boo face. No. No. Uh. -uh. She's actually going to make herself cry. No. I'm not doing it. I'm, gonna, I'm taking a stand. She's laughing. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> She's trying to make herself cry. All right, my first act. First act is husband. I'm going to beat my wife. <sighs> Just like Hokusei, he'll beat those kids. Anyway, the rest of uh, my Gashira 1 through 5. There's a lot of good here. Uda... Fan favorite, but he went 6-9 and nine in his Komusubi debut. Asano Yama, back up here. You know, a lot of people are probably going to pick Asano Yama. They still believe in him. Atami Fuji, really strong right now. And bonus, he doesn't fight Tedano Fuji. They're from the same stable. Meisei, ah, I'm not too high on him. Oho, another strong young guy. He's had a much slower climb up the Banzuke. And it's actually his first time at Maegashira 3. He's going to be put through the ringer because he's going to be fighting, uh, wait, who is he fighting first? Oho's fighting Wakamoto Haru first. And thank you, Circumzenith, all for the subscription. Uh, so Oho is really going to go through the ringer here. I predict he will struggle. I like him a lot, though, but I think he's going to struggle. Takanosho, I love him. Don't get me wrong, but... He has not been the same Takanosho since he was, you know, Sekiwake for a year. He has not been the same strength. He has not had the same, you know, skill. And even though the last time he was up here this far, he got a 6-9. and nine, But the time before that, 11-4 and four June Yusho dropped two in the last three days. So he could have been in that Yusho race. 10-5 and five from Maegashira 12. That doesn't really tell me much about how well he's going to do up here. So... Hopefully, you know, recovering from that injury back in November, he can perform well. I don't exactly believe in him to perform well. Toby Zaru, I got to pick him. He's my favorite. Uh, he might just barely be out of reach of the Sanyaku ranks because you can see on day one, he's fighting Takanosho. So you got to stay yeah, up for day one. Lose. I'm, I'm actually going to slap you. <laughs> I'm getting the point. Takenosho is 8 to 4 in that head to head. Thank you, Sleeping Bag, for your Prime subscription. So, I mean, Toby Zaru and Takenosho might dodge the Sanyaku ranks. Takenosho is probably going to fall victim to them in the second week, though, but probably won't have to go through the Ozeki gauntlet. Don't know for sure, but remember, he does not have to fight Takakesho. Toby Zaru does not have to fight Daiesho. So. Who knows? They probably will reach up there. Hirado Umi. This is also his career high. Throw him out front. Let him run away. No, he hates us. <laughs> Bear does go. not love it. Bear does not like us. <laughs> he constantly wants to be outside. But uh, last time he was up here was July of 2023. Kind of a long time ago. He went 5 and 10. I can kind of expect a similar record. He is, you know, he's one of the less talked about rookies. 
you know, amongst the Atami Fujis and the Onosatos and even the Oho, who has Taiho family name, Hirado Umi is not nearly as talked about. And, you know, flying under the radar like that may help him in terms of, uh, you know, how much focus he gets. But a smart sumo wrestler is going to take every single match seriously, you know? So I can expect him to, if he dodges out of the Sanyaku ranks, he might do well. If he doesn't, he won't do well. And then, of course, fan favorite Midori Fuji and Ono Sato, I think, at Maigashira 5, they will dodge most of the brunt of the very tippy top. Because if you look at it, Tenno Fuji has to fight 1, 2, 3, 4, Ozeki. 1, 2, 3, 4, Sekiwaki and Komusubi. So that's already 8 matches. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7? If you only go from Maigashira 4 up to Yokozuna. But, you know, if someone down here outperforms and is like, you know, 10 and 0, then he might fight the Yokozuna early or something. You know, you never really know. So maybe Ono Sato and Midori Fuji dodge. Well, I mean, Midori Fuji can't fight Terano Fuji. He also can't fight Atami Fuji. So maybe Midori Fuji completely dodges Ozeki and Sekiwake. He'll probably have one or two matches up there. Can't be too sure. Same with Ono Sato. If Ono Sato mostly fights down, even then I could see him struggle. Because even though he is coming off of a really good tournament, 11-4 uh, and four Kanto show, if we look at his three losses... I mean, obviously, Kotonowaka, Hol, Shoryu, Teru no Fuji, he's going to lose to. But he beat Takanosho, who's around here. Tamawashi, who's around here. Meisei, who's around here. Oho, who's around here. So he might actually feast. I was prepared to say I think he might not do as hot, but he might be feasting. Ono Sato. So definitely not a stupid pick. But, of course, I have to go Tobizaru. I love Tobizaru. He is my favorite. And Ono Sato... I think is probably the best pick you could make up here. Uda is going to get a lot of picks. Atami, I mean, there's like an even split, I think, between Uda, Atami Fuji, Asano Yama, and Midori Fuji. Oho, I wouldn't pick him. Hirado Umi, I'm iffy on. Meisei, I don't pick him. Takanosho, I can't pick him because Tobizaru's here. And uh, Ono Sato, I would 100% pick him. Over Tobizaru? I don't know. I, I'd like to see some monkey magic work its way onto Ono Sato, you know? <laughs> now, down here in the lower parts of the Bonzuke, Magashira 6 through 10, let me take a sip of my soda. Sudagisho, I like him. He's cool. Not my favorite, though. Gonoyama, I like him. He's cool. He's more my favorite than Tsurugisho. The Keen Bozer Dozer down here at Maigashira 7. Tamawashi, he's a wild card at this point. You don't know if he's going to go 10 and 5 or 5 and 10. Ono Show, I'd put more money on him going 5 and 10. Takiyasu, is he even going to survive the entirety of the tournament? Because if he does, you know he's going 12 and 3 and he's going to lose on the last day. <laughs> Hokuto Fuji. Equally likely to perform as well or as bad as, you know, Takeyasu. Koto Shoho, I'm mixed on. Shodai is at his lowest point in a long time. Mitaki Yumi is still struggling in these double-digit Maigashira ranks. So this is kind of a crapshoot here. You could realistically pick anyone and they could all surprise you. Like, it's been a long time since Ono Sho has... You know, done that well, I think. Let me actually uh, click on his rank here. But, I mean, he's coming off of a 10 and 5, but that's from Maigashira 14. The last time he was anywhere near here, you know, 6 and 9, 9 and 6, 3 and 12. Like, I do not trust Ono Show as far as I could throw him. Uh, then we have, you know, Keen Bozon, Gonoyama, kind of in the same class. They're both like mid 20s. Keen Bozon, a lot of people like him. He only went 7 and 8 at the last tournament. Could go 8 and 7 or 9 and 6 again. Keen Bozon's not a bad pick. He's solid. He's good. Same thing with Gonoyama coming off the back of a 5 and 10 from Maigashira 3. I think he could get, you know, another winning record here. I think he is going to get another winning record here. But I don't think he cracks double digits. Uh, this is one knock against Tsurugisho. He's at his new career high of Maigashira 6. Which, you know, in the grand scheme of things, that is very high. But the last time he was this high on the Banzuke 
was November of 2019. And I mean, that's a long time ago. And if that was his strongest, eh, <laughs> I have no faith in Sudogisho to get anywhere near nine and six this tournament. And if he does, that'll, that'll be a pleasant surprise, you know? I'm not saying that to disparage him. I just do not think he is the best sumo wrestler in this section right here. Uh, Takiyasu, again, I love Takiyasu, but, you know, he either goes 12 and 3 from this rank or he does not finish the tournament. And I don't know if I want to put my chips in that basket. Same with Tamawashi. Tamawashi's been all over the place, kind of. He, I mean, 2 and 13 into two straight winning records. No, thank goodness. Is he going to get an 8 and 7? Is he going to get a 13 and 2 U show? Or is he going to get a 2 and 13? Like, you can definitely trust him to finish all 15 days, but can you trust him to get wins <laughs> is the question. <laughs> I I uh, I don't know who to pick out of here. Hokuto Fuji. I like him, but I don't like him enough to want to pick him because of his inconsistency as well as him, you know, coming off the back of an injury. 5 and 10 from Komusubi. Four wins before leaving due to injury. Is he still going to be fighting injured? Is he going to be okay? It's hard to say, you know? Koto Shoho across from him. Koto Shoho has also been horribly incon inconsistent. And, you know, that was due to ankle injury a long time ago. More recently in uh, May of 2023. But at least this time he's stuck around in the top division. Uh... I mean, you can even see it from Maigashira 11, 7 and 8, 7 and 8. This was a COVID absence, July 2022. They should put an asterisk next to this one. So I don't really have faith in Koto Shoho to do that well either. He's 24 years old, but he's more of a known factor than, you know, Kin Bozan, Gonoyama, Takeru Fuji. So I think uh, despite being young and still malleable, I think, uh, I mean, at least in my perspective, he's worn out his rookie welcome because he was a rookie in 2020. He was 20 years old in the top division. And I mean, the only things he really has to show for it are a couple of Judeo you show, which that's still really good. Don't get me wrong, but he hasn't really translated his Judeo success into top division success. No matter the level like this 11 and four junior show in uh, January of 2023, if I could just look at that real quick, like that was Takake show 12 and three Yusho, show. And I'm pretty sure on day 15, it was, yeah, it was him versus Koto Shoho. Like it was no contest for Takake show. This was more a tournament where the top of the top did not perform well. Like, Teruno Fuji was out. Takakesho was the only Ozeki. Wakataka Kage was still Sekiwake. Takiyasu down for injury. Shodai being Shodai. Hoshoryu only had an 8 and 7. Otonawaka only had an 8 and 7. Kitibayama had an 11 and 4, too, you know? So, th this was not the strongest tournament. January of uh, 23. Okino Umi retired. Tochi Noshin was still on the Banzuke. Which we will be watching uh, Tochi no Shin's retirement video later. That'll be Twitch only, because I don't want to get YouTube struck. So, I really don't have faith in Koto Shoho to make a good <laughs> splash. Shodai! Shodai. Last time, he showed up and he died. He got a Kinboshi and then went 4 and 11. His Kinboshi was his last win of the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> he got the Kinboshi and he's like, okay, I don't need to win anymore. <laughs> I, uh... Oh, the wedding was great. Synth synthet synthetic Simp Shrimp of the Southern Sea. That's a hell of a name. That's a big mouthful. But uh, I already did a stream where I talked about the wedding on my variety channel. I can talk about it a little bit more here later, but I'm not going to go into too much depth and detail. Uh, anyway, showed I. Honestly, it would be really funny to pick him at this position. This is the lowest rank he's been since November of 2019. And all the way back then, he had an 11 and 4 June Yu show. So, is he going to show up or is he going to continue to die? You know, you never know. 
Mitake Yumi. I'm kind of over and done with when it comes to Mitake Yumi. I know that's really harsh, really mean, but I had so, so high hopes for him. But after losing Ozeki, he, he, becoming an Ozeki was the worst thing that could have happened to him. Honestly. I'm not picking Mitake Yumi. Uh, but who do I pick here is the question. I feel like uh, a lot of people might pick Takiyasu. I think most people will pick Takiyasu, but I'm really feeling Gonoyama or Keen Bowls on. And I think at this point, it's a coin flip on which one I want. Gonoyama is still fresh off of his 5 and 10 from the upper ranks. So Keen Bowls on coming off of a 7 and 8 from, you know, roughly the same position. Uh, it's hard to say who's going to be hungrier. I mean, hell, it could be Tamawashi coming out with a 13 and 2, you know? You never know. So, th this one's difficult because they're all so mid, to put it bluntly. I feel like you could pick anyone here and it it's just down to the luck of the draw. <laughs> Kim Bolzan has a bad knee injury? Oh, I didn't know that. And thank you, Nancy. Hmm... Yeah, this is a tough choice. I'll just keep it on Tamawashi and come back to it later. And then down here, I know I'm already picking, but <laughs> I know who I'm already picking. Takeru Fuji, 13 and 2 you show from the previous tournament. And by God, is he coming in with a steel chair? He's only been in sumo since November of 2022. 7 and 0, 7 and 0, 6 and 1, 6 and 1, 6 and 1, 5 and 2, 6 and 1. Like, uh oh, 5 and 2. <laughs> is he losing steam? No! 6 and 1, 13 and 2. This man is going to go 15 and 0, you show from Magashir 17. You heard it here first. But in reality, I'm really high on him, and I think it would be really funny. So I'm picking him, no matter what. I think a lot of other people might pick him too, especially if they were watching Judo at the last tournament. Uh, but the rest of this class here, you know, it's a lot of ailing veterans and a couple of guys that, again, fly under the radar. I'll go over the, the veterans first. You have, uh, you know, Endo, Myogiryu, Sada no Umi. Uh, did I say Ryuden? Dayamami coming up from Judo. Like, I wouldn't pick any of these veterans, honestly. Like, they're clearly losing steam. And, you know, 36-year-old Sada no Umi, Endo, 33 years old, 5 and 10 tournament, Mio Giryu, 37 years old, coming off of a 5 and 10 tournament. Dayamami, sure, he had uh, an 8 and 7 from Judeo 1, but... Uh, I would probably be looking at some of these rookies... Takeru Fuji, Roga, Kitanowaka, Shimazu Umi, Shonan no Umi. I remember Shonan no Umi was one of those guys that came up and got a 10 and 5 alongside Haku Oho. And uh, I think it was Gonoyama, right? And since then, I mean, 7 and 8, 7 and 8. 7 and 8 from Maegashira 5 and 6 is not bad, especially when you're this young. But 4 and 11 after that, like, oof, bro, you got to bring it back. Uh, let's see. We also have a uh, Shimazu Umi, new career high for him, 27 years old, so a little bit more known. But uh, he is also a rookie this year. Obviously going to be overshadowed by Ono Sato. Probably going to be overshadowed by Takeru Fuji as well. Uh, I mean, he's not bad. He's coming off of a nine and six, nine and six. Is he going to get another nine and six? I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised if he got another winning record. Ten plus wins? I doubt. And that's really what it comes down to. You want to get the guys who are going to get the most wins because this is Kachi Clash. So, you know, if all your guys got eight and sevens, you know, that's fine. But you're not going to get, you know, top 50 with eight and sevens. You're going to, you know, be mid middle of the pack. And even if you look at like my profile last tournament, I got, uh, you know, 141, which is one of my best scores ever. But uh, I'm still only Judeo. I actually got demoted after that. I went from Maegashira 15 to Judeo 1 because, uh, what was it? Uh, January got knocked off the board. So, <laughs> my total points for the year went down 
only a little bit, but that 26 is really anchoring me. But besides that point, uh, I was talking about who? Oh, uh, I was talking about, you know, trying to pick the guy who's going to get the most wins. Roga, he's fulfilled his, uh, his, uh, whatchamacallit, New Year's resolution of making it back to the top division, nine and six. Could have been, you know, 13 and two, but those four losses at the end, kind of ugly. But, uh, no, good to see him going up. Uh, Futagoyama Stable, everybody loves Futagoyama Stable. They keep posting those sumo food videos and they're adorable. I have, you know, Princess now asking me, oh, where's Nabatame? Uh, how's he doing? Well, he's at a new career high of Makushi to five, but we're not going to talk about him just yet. Because, you know, Roga, I like him. I'm sure he has a lot of fans now, too, because of sumo food. But I don't believe in him to get 10 plus wins. Kitanawaka, 23 years old. Again, just barely outside of rookie for this year. But I mean, within the past six months, he is a rookie. 5 and 10 in his first debut in the top division, but 10 and 5 brings him back. Is he going to perform as poorly? I don't think so. But I think if anything he might get an 8 and 7, 9 and 6. I don't really see 10 plus wins in the in the cards for him. Uh I don't I haven't really paid attention to his style, so I couldn't tell you what he does better than, you know, his other guys around here, but uh I mean, 23 years old. It's his second tournament in the top division. Just give him some time. Uh, but Takeru Fuji, you know, he's a Fuji. Isagahama stable. Coming out of Nihon University. 24 years old. His birthday is in April. So after this tournament, before the next. 13-2 and two Yusho from Judeo. And it's not like he had weak opponents either. Ten Shoho. Kagiaki. Previous, you know, top division mainstay. Lost to Roga, though. Defeated Shishi. Uh, you know, other top division guys like Aqua. Man, he really didn't fight Judeo 1 or 2. I guess he didn't need to. He beat Toki Hayate, that kind of thing. So, Takeru Fuji. I like him a lot. I'm high on Takeru Fuji. And I kind of want to see the back-to-back uh, -back Judeo and top division Yusho. And also, debut Yusho. But again, being a rookie the same year that Ono Sato is a rookie, it's going to be like, you know, being a rookie in the NFL, CJ Stroud, ah, he went to the playoffs and, you know, that one receiver for the the Rams got completely BTFO'd for rookie of the year because, oh, it's, he's not a quarterback. <laughs> so it's like Ono Sato is CJ Stroud and Takeru Fuji is going to be, uh, what, what was his name? Puka Nakua? He was the rookie receiver for the Rams that, like, had 1,300 yards or some crap. Do you think Teteru Nofuji has one more Basho win in him? Oh, absolutely. I think Teteru Nofuji has maybe two or three, at least. You think Sumo will advance to the point that injuries will be looked at so the wrestlers can heal to stay in Sumo longer? Uh, I don't know, because there used to be that system where Sumo wrestlers could leave for a basho due to injury and not lose rank but they got rid of that because people were taking advantage of it too much so i'd like to see them bring something like that back or like even just on the down low be like yo if someone like you know breaks a bone in their foot or you know tears an acl or something then maybe we'll just lessen the fall from their injury or something because it's really annoying to have to watch wakataka kage and judio you know, oh, Aoyama is still in it. Look at him. Haku Oho is coming back too. But uh, anyway, to finish off my Bonzuke, my, uh, yeah, my Kachi Clash picks, I'm going to be going Takeru Fuji. And mostly because I just don't like anyone else in this section as much as I like him. <laughs> Ichi Yamamoto, I don't think I mentioned him, but, you know, budget Abi. He did not perform well from Maigashira 7, 5 and 10, so, eh, I mean, maybe he'll get double digits down here. Probably would, but, uh, I'm not betting on him. No more watching Lazy Sumo. So these are going to be my picks. Kotonawaka, Wakamoto Haru, Tobizaru, Takeru Fuji, 
And I'm still undecided on this middle section here. They all have high upside and they all have low downside. Thank you. Serious injuries could be given a one basho break. Normal everyday boo-boos get some dirt rubbed on it. <laughs> well, then you'd have to like, you know, do up the definition of what is a serious injury. What is a, a minor boo-boo like, uh, you know, Wakataka Kage's torn ACL. You know, maybe they just keep him at the bottom of Judeo or something. I don't know. Okuto Fuji's knee okay? I don't know, but no news is usually good news. Uh, something like, you know, Hakuho getting a broken pinky toe. It's like, okay, bro, sure. But, uh, you know, Waka, Waka Takakage is, I mean, I, I know a, a toe in, a, a broken toe is a major thing, but like, let's be real, Hakuho was probably just BSing like, oh yeah, I broke my toe. Sorry, can't do sumo. <laughs> It's still so hard to pick. My guess is six through ten. Hmm. I really don't know who to pick here. I hovered Tomawashi because he's a safe bet, I think. But you know, you want to get the guy that's going to get you double-digit wins, not the safe bet. Do I go for the meme and pick Shodai? Depending on the injury, perhaps, or you fall to the next rank for two more Basho, then fall again and repeat. Yeah, it would definitely have to be on an injury to injury basis. Like something like uh when Takakesho had a torn pectoral muscle. Like that was nasty looking. And I'm sure it hurt like a bitch, but he was still training even though he had that massive bruise on his chest, you know? But and then you have like Well, I guess the question would more so have to be for the guys that aren't Ozeki and Yokozuna. Something like uh you know, just a really bad ankle sprain that takes you out. Like, yeah, sure, fall. Or, you know, if you know it's going to be a one basho thing, then let them fall. But if they're going to be out for multiple basho, soften the fall. But then that creates the argument that's not fair to the people that are currently winning. And now, you know, let's just say for whatever reason, uh, Asanoyama got injured and he's going to be out for multiple Basho. So instead of going 0 and 15 and falling to Maegashira 17, he went 0 and 15, Maegashira 8, 0 and 15, Maegashira 17. Now, Toki Hayate, who's at Judio 1, is like, well, he should have fallen all the way and given me the spot, but, you know, he's just kind of occupying a spot. So maybe something like a Bonzuke guy? And then after the next tournament, you could just over demote someone outside of the top division. But, you know, it, it, again, it's really hard to come to a conclusion like that. And uh, thank you, Killy Dude, for the congrats. Was it Cody Rhodes nasty? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, let me see if I could find it, actually. Let's see. Uh, this article does not have a picture of his chest. <sighs> Let's see. I'm, I'm trying to find a picture of his torn muscle. It's really hard to search for sumo stuff from America. <laughs> Let's see. Ah, here we go. Uh, warning for anyone that needs it. But this is what uh, Takakesho's chest and arm look like. His skin oh is God. purple and yellow. From when? This was uh, 2019. Oh. Torn pectoral muscle. Oh, my goodness. Don't pick Shodai. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, maybe I just stick to Tamawashi. Solid veteran. You never know. Takiyasu, same argument. I'm, I'm still deciding. <laughs> Honestly, let me just roll a die. Uh, all right. I have a D20 here. One. Yeah, multiple of, you know, one. Yeah. One Gonoyama, two Keen Bozon, three Tamawashi, four Takayasu. Fell off the table. Crack. Oh my god. Stay on the table. So bad. All right. 17. So that is, let's see, 20 would have been uh, Takayasu, 19 Tamawashi, 18 Kimbozan, 17 Gonoyama. That's who I'm picking. Gonoyama. <laughs> That's. Who Gonoyama? Yeah. I mean, he's he's solid. He's good. Might be uh might not be the smartest pick because he is higher on the Bonzuke. Does have a low low chance of fighting an Ozeki or two. But I mean, let's save these picks before I forget. There are 800 entries. Don't forget to play everyone. There's Stanley. We got, we got to try to find the, the people from our chat here. See, Lord Stanley. Uh, oh, it's in order of their ranks. I see. Let's see. There's a lot of people joining. That's a good name. Onion Bagel. <laughs> Ooh, woo, raccoon. <laughs> Waifu Daddy? What are these names? Link to play? Sure. You're gonna attach it to your Google accounts. On well, Nayokozuna is in Makushita. <laughs> Varen Gunner, thank you for the Prime subscription. There's a husky. Someone has... Oh, yep, there's Ona Yokozuna. <laughs> Tochi no Jean. Let's see. I am uh, Judio 1 right now. There I am. Thank you, Inindo2000, for your subscription as well. There I am, right between Zen Zen and Phoneticals. Lone Wolf, I recognize that name. I know a lot of you probably do play. I'm just tr scrolling through these names. There's Apatha, Apothans. I think that might be the same person. You never know. Some sometimes there's weird overlap. <laughs> What's up? Alrighty, I'm gonna stop uh, stalking you guys on stream. Damn, chat. Oh. What? Never mind. What? I'm not on. Huh? Hmm? I don't know. Refresh it. Keep going back to the bottom. <laughs> Let's see. Where's, uh... Oh, there she is. Princess Arden. <laughs> I did every single one the same except for... You, you picked all the same picks um, except Takanosho instead of Toby Zaru? Yeah. <laughs> every single one. I was waiting for you to do the stupid, uh... Tamawashi or whatever, and I'll be like, oh my god, just pick You could have picked one yourself? No, just I'm pick not. a funny name. No, no, no. I'm going to win because Takanojo is going to get more wins than Tobizaru. <laughs> These are going to be my Kachi Clash picks. And, and he's going to win first day, first fight. It is true. We'll uh, go over the schedule right now. And then after that, uh, we are going to switch to Twitch only because we're going to watch a bunch of YouTube videos such as Kotonowaka's Ascension to Ozeki Ceremony, Tochi Noshin's Hair Cutting Ceremony, and we have a bunch of training videos on deck. And also just, you know, shoot the shit like we usually do. Uh, doesn't look like we're going to get a Dohyo Matsuri video. They did not live stream it to their YouTube channel like they usually do, so I guess we're SOL on that one. But the schedule is going to be as follows. Day one, 
Taketu Fuji versus Dayamami. It looks like they're just going to go straight across up at each other. Endo versus Roga. Myogiryu versus Kitano Waka. Nishiki Fuji versus Churano. Uh, ooh, excuse me. Churano Umi. Ryu Den versus Shimazu Umi. Shonan no Umi versus Sara no Umi. Ichi Yamamoto versus Mi Takeumi. Shodai versus Koto Shoho. Hokuto Fuji versus Takeyasu. A good rivalry match here. 14 to 9 in favor of Takeyasu. Ono Sho Tamawashi, 7 and 7 in the head to head. Kin Bolzan versus Gonoyama. Tsurugi Sho versus Ono Sato for the first time. Midori Fuji versus Hirado Umi. Tobi Zaru versus Takanosho. Takanosho has the head to head 8 to 4. Wakamoto Haru versus Oho. 5 to 1 in favor of Wakamoto Haru. Daisho versus Meisei. 15 to 4 in favor of Daisho. Kotonowaka versus Atami Fuji. Takakesho versus Asano Yama. 6 and 5 in the head to head should be a good one. Hoshoryu versus Ura. Kirishima versus Abi. And Teruno Fuji versus Nishikigi for the Musubi no Ichiban. Then, for day two, Endo versus Takeru Fuji, Myogiryu versus Dayamami, Roga versus Kitano Waka, and notice that all 42 men are here. Ryu Den versus Nishiki Fuji, Shonan no Umi versus Chura no Umi, Shimazu Umi versus Sara no Umi, Shodai versus Ichi Yamamoto for the first time, Mitake Umi versus Koto Shoho, Ono Sho versus Hokuto Fuji, a great rivalry match there at 10 to 9. Thank you, Mississippi Cajun, for your subscription. Takiyasu versus Tamawaji in another fantastic rivalry match. 19 to 17 in the head to head. They've been fighting each other for 12 years. Almost to the day. After that, we have Tsurugisho versus Kin Bolzon. Gonoyama versus Ono Sato. That should be a club banger. Tobi Zaru versus Midori Fuji. Two small specialists. Hirado Umi versus Takanosho. Daisho versus Oho for the first time. Wakamoto Haru, who is 6 and 0 versus Meisei. Kirishima versus Atami Fuji. Asano Yama versus Kotonowaka. Abi versus Takakesho. Abi is actually 6 and 2 in that head to head. Hol Shoryu vs. 